Hey everyone, this is Erica Sabo. Welcome back to my weekly vlog. There's a lot to cover this week, so let's get started. So for most of the week, I've been working on my desk setup, and I think it's going along pretty well. I ended up actually changing the monitor I'm using to a bigger one that I had that's a lot sharper. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just pairing that up with my MacBook Pro there, some nice wallpapers, I have some Asuka going on over there, really, really cool fan art, and then I have some Nagiyasu, which I will get into very soon, because I finally got back into the anime, um, but aside from that, in terms of, let's say, let's go with gaming, I have been actually playing a lot of games, uh, I usually don't have as much time as I would like to, but luckily a lot of these games are portable, the only one that wasn't I think for me was uh, Asura's Wrath and that was part of Backloggers Anonymous podcast that I was a part of it was like a three-part uh, a three-part series where me and uh, two of the guys at Pixelbit Angelo and Julian we talked about the game so I actually ended up completing that it was the only console game I had on my list here uh, but it was a really really great game if you haven't checked out those um, those podcasts I definitely recommend it I'll put it in the details below really fun really stylized game uh, and I really liked the way that quick time events were integrated within it so it might be worth you know, considering it's basically, uh, it's basically like an, an, an anime game. <laughs> it's one of the best examples of a game that replicates the feel of an anime. So aside from that, I've been playing Bravely Default, which I'm sure you're not very surprised about, but I've only been having time to play it when I commute, so I'm still not done with it, and I, I really gotta hustle because Symphonia Chronicles is coming out this Tuesday and I'm not there yet so <laughs> I'm still in chapter three so I gotta I gotta work on this I have upgraded all my shops though they're all at level 11 which I'm very happy about but I still have a ways to go I've also been spending a little bit of time on Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc but I haven't been able to spend as much time with it considering I'm trying to spend more time on my 3DS with Bravely Default right now so I am going to have a review on that, so I will have to hustle on that one a bit more <laughs> in the next week. But right now, yeah, I'm just juggling and juggling a lot of stuff. Uh, I think that's it in terms of gaming. Mm. Oh, actually, there was one thing I did want to say. Uh, I actually got from a really awesome guy named Ken Wesley, who you can find on Twitter as DarkArm66. He sent me a copy of Skies of Arcadia Legends. This is amazing. I, uh, <laughs> this is so amazing. I've actually never owned this game, but I've always wanted to. I played a bit of it with my friend a uh, long time ago, and I really enjoyed it, and I looked into it more, and it's just, it's right up my alley. It's right up my alley. It's, uh, it's a really great turn-based JRPG, and it's a classic. It's something that any JRPG fan should own. It's, it's a gem. It's a gem, and it's, uh, it's really great that a GameCube version came out, because it originally came out on the Dreamcast, but this is like the extended version the director's cut. So yeah, thank you so much, Ken. I really, 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 really appreciate this. This means the world to me, and it's in actually a really good condition, too. I mean, like, it has, like, I did not expect it to have, like, everything, like, even, like, the little GameCube book in here, and even the little Sega product registration. Like, you took really good care of this, man. So, thank you. I really, 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 really appreciate this. Yeah, so I think that's it in terms of gaming, but I have a lot, I have a lot to play. Like, a lot to play. Um, I think in terms of pre-orders, I mean, I have Symphonia Chronicles pre-ordered. I have Final Fantasy X, X2 Remaster Collector's Edition exclusively from uh, Square Enix's shop pre-ordered. I'm thinking about pre-ordering the limited edition limited edition for Demon Gaze on Nipponichi's website because I've been looking more into that and I've, I saw the screenshots that were recently added and it is beautiful. I'm not really into first person dungeon crawlers but it looks so good. So good. So aside from that, I don't, oh, aside from that, I don't really think I have anything else pre-ordered. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I could afford anything else, to be honest. I don't have all the money in the world. I wish I did. I wish I did. But I have a lot of other things that are coming my way. There's one big purchase I'm 
still trying to save up enough money for so that's going to be a secret i'm not going to tell you guys until it actually happens but yeah i think that's in terms of gaming in terms of anime and manga, uh, I actually finally got caught up in Attack on Titan. So I am I actually just finished volume 11. I'm not going to show you the front because I've already discussed this before in one of our monthly pickups videos, but the front covers spoil things a lot, and I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, so I'm just going to show you the binding here. So I finished 11. The next one isn't going to be coming out until April, which is a huge bummer because they were coming out monthly, and I waited because, like, I, I was anxious to read and to find out more past season one of the anime, but it was one thing where, like, it always ends in a cliffhanger, and so I kind of wanted to save up enough volumes so I could read a bunch of it all at the same time but four volumes goes really fast and I basically read everything and it's definitely cleared up a lot of stuff but there's still tons of questions the actual plot is opening up more and more and it's really it's um, it's narrowing down the options and it's narrowing down exactly what's going on but it's still very vague on what's happening so I definitely recommend it if you if you read manga and if you really like to attack on Titan I will tell you one thing however um, the art isn't that good. You know, if you haven't read any of the manga, the art is very, um... It's, it's funny, though, because, like, I'm not even really putting it right. It's not that it's not good. It's just that it's really different. Kind of like how... I remember when I was first watching Dragon Ball Z, I didn't like the art of Dragon Ball. <laughs> I didn't like the art of it at all. I didn't like the art of the series. I didn't like the way the characters looked or anything, but it's just a particular style. And I think that Isayama-san has just a very particular style to what he does. And it can be kind of sloppy sometimes, but I guess that's what the anime is for. So, yeah. Also, um, there's going to be the Boston Anime Con, I don't know the actual name of it, but they're going to be announcing the English voice actors very soon, so I'm actually really excited for that. I'm not really into English voice acting, I much prefer seiyus, but whatever, I'm still excited because it's going to be published by Funimation, and Funimation usually does a very consistent, good job of their voice actors, of, of their voice acting in their animes, so I am looking forward to it. I definitely am looking forward to it. Uh, in terms of the anime side of things, I have been, I've actually been doing the same thing as I was for the Attack on Titan manga, where I waited a while to get back into things just so I could have a bunch of different episodes to fall back on, and that was for a really awesome anime I've talked to you all about before called Nagi no Asakara or Nagi Asu. This is a really very heartfelt a very heartfelt anime. It's very much like romance, coming of age, story that's very subtle in its portrayal. It's not, I don't know, it's so nice. It's so nice. It's so nice that it's my wallpaper over here. And it's so nice that it's my screensaver here. And it's so nice that it's also my wallpaper. So this is, um, yeah, my wallpaper. <laughs> I, uh, I'm obviously really obsessed with this anime, and I'll be honest with you when I say this, uh, despite how long I've been watching anime, I can be quite picky about the anime I watch because I'm very much, especially into older anime, like from the 90s, because that's around when I, when I grew up and when I really got to experience animes, but this has to be one of my favorite animes ever. That's a lot to say for a new anime, considering how many amazing ones came out in the past. But there's something about the subtleties in the character development, and the subtleties in the relationships, and the things that are suggested upon, and even like a glance from one character to another can really, really change the way you feel uh, about particular relationships going on in the anime. Now, this anime is, has become known for having a huge love polygon. At this point, I think it's a love hexagon. It sounds really crazy, but it's not, it's not that, it's not that crazy because it's still very, like, it's still very innocent in a way. It's, it almost feels, it almost feels like the way you did when you had your first crush, let's say, and you don't exactly know how to fathom your feelings. There are some characters that are better at it than others, but it's a very whimsical time and it's very heady feeling I get from it. And it's a little bit of a high I get from it, actually, um, just because of how 
nostalgic the feeling is and there are definitely characters that I am rooting for in terms of relationships but at this point in time it's really hard to tell who's gonna end up getting with whom so right now I am on the Chisaki Sumugu ship because uh, they've been calling these ships uh, but they're my my favorite by far they're the they're the two that I want to get together so badly like there are other characters I really want for it to get together with like um oh man you know like I want to think that Kaname and Shisaki will because Kaname is such a great character but I I don't think so I don't think so um maybe with Seiyu I don't know and I love Miyuna but I don't think she's ever gonna get hit with, with Hikari considering how much Hikari loves Minaka so oh I don't know I don't know and I wish I could tell you what happened in the latest episode because that just aired right uh, right before I did this actually I wanted to wait uh, but I also don't want to spoil anything so if anyone here is a big fan of Nagiyasu please let me know in the comments below because I don't really have anyone to talk to about this anime <laughs> and I just gush about it to myself and to my boyfriend who doesn't really care he's not really into that kind of stuff and it's not it's not smutty it's not it's I don't know it's just like it's it's a little too kitty for him even though I don't think it's kitty at all I think that the feelings are very universal no matter what your age is no matter what the circumstances are but I am totally in love with it and honestly uh, Chisaki is one of my favorite characters I find her so relatable and just I don't know she's been through a lot especially after the time skip halfway through the series which is when things get really 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 good. Chisaki is one of those characters that's had to deal with a lot of loss and has had to learn to move on and to change and become I don't know just a stronger person and has had to learn how to grow up through the experience and that's something that I had to deal with very much so when I moved from Michigan to back to Canada it was a really hard time for me and there were a lot of things that happened all at once and I lost a lot of friendships in the process it was a very hurtful time for me and I didn't have anybody when I came back to uh, to Canada in 2009 uh, it was it was a scary moment it was a scary moment so when she experiences those things I see a little bit of myself in there too and I think that Simugu he's a very quiet character he's much more of an observer he doesn't talk unless he needs to talk but he is full of so much emotional depth that he keeps to himself he's so introverted I just find it so touching and I find his character like very very attractive <laughs> very attractive I like guys who can be very open about their emotions but can also be very controlled about it too and he's definitely that and he cares very deeply for for Chisaki I'm not gonna explain any more than that but he cares very much for her and I thought I find it very sweet I find it very sweet in the way the two of them have grown up since the time skip so ah uh, I really hope they do um we are up to episode 20 now, so I believe there's only going to be a few more, like a handful more. So we'll just have to wait and see how things go. I'm really excited for next week's episode. We'll see. We'll see. Now, in terms of YouTube, things are going really well. My channel is doing really, 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 really good, and it's getting a bit on the overwhelming side. But I'm still trying to put as much time as I can into everything regarding it and it's something that I've been working more and more into my daily life whereas before it was something that I just I had as like a little hobby right it was something that I did during my free time but now it's starting to invade my work and it's become really interesting it's become very interesting and I'm trying my best to reply to everyone as much as I can and to send messages uh back to people who've sent me really awesome encouraging messages in the past and to greet people who have just subscribed to me so if I haven't commented if I haven't replied to your comment in a few days please be patient it's um it's really hard it's really hard and I think this transition period especially has been really tricky me trying to to do that I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings I really want to try and do this with the time that I have which is not a lot but I want to because I care so much about all of you you guys have been really great I wanted to give a bunch of YouTube shout outs to people who've been really awesome have really awesome channels who you should definitely check out and some of those people are uh, Sector 13 Gaming we've got Pro Jared 
who's been one of my biggest inspirations. I met him last year at Con Bravo just very briefly and he was great and I would love to meet him again this year as well to thank him yet again for helping me stick around with my channel and do everything I do because he gives me a lot of inspiration and he's been very encouraging in his own way and has really awesome videos if you haven't checked them out. Some more are Ugu Bear, uh, Addy Sneaker Freak, Riley AV08, and we've got a Super Virtual Boy Show, which I'm very excited to see more of. I find it to be such a such a unique idea, such a unique channel uh, concept. So I'm really, really, really hoping that all of you will check out these channels. I will link them below for you all. Uh, in terms of Patreon, things are going. Uh, just as well. Things are, are actually really, really great and have been a lot of really cool people in the process and I, uh, I just re reached my second milestone. So I am a little bit low on money this month so I've only made two, um, two donations to other patron or Patreon uh, creatives but I have two more that are in the works actually right now. Um, the second person who I ended up donating to, because last week I talked about how I donated to Pushing Up Roses, because she has been such an inspiration, I feel like she deserves all the help she can get. Another one that I donated to was to my friend Gogo Rufflecopter. She has really, really awesome tech and gaming related videos. She has such passion, such passion, and I, I love her drive. And if you are watching this, uh, yeah, yeah, you deserve this. You really deserve this, girl. Uh, I think you're really great, and for me, to help support you on your Patreon campaign was a no-brainer for me. And it's something that I'm really happy that we could start in a way together. I know that um, we started at different times, but I feel like I got a lot of support through you when I, when I started my own. And it was nice to be able to talk to someone about starting the campaign and how we were going to go about it. So yeah, it really, it really means a lot. And you've shown me so much support already. So I wanted to thank you any way I could. Hence, hence the donation. Um, I do want to thank a bunch of people for, um, for becoming patrons on my campaign as well. And some of those people are actually pushing up roses. Uh, thank you so, 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 so much for helping, uh, helping my campaign. It was such a dream when I found out the other day. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh my God, like you inspire me so much. And to know that you're helping support my campaign in this way is really crazy. It's really amazing. And I really appreciate that very much. Some more people uh, that I want to give big thanks to and a big shout out to are Roger Dowdell. I've had some really great conversations with him already. Um, <clears throat> Mike Fear of it. It's been really great. And then the last person is my mom. My mom, Emily. She, <laughs> I can't believe it. It was so sweet of her to donate to my campaign. And she's been really, really so supportive and so helpful of this um, these choices I've made in my life because I haven't always had as much support as I'd like from family and from friends in terms of all kinds of things like one of the big ones was me dropping out of journalism school and me just trying to pursue a freelance career with the experience I had already gained and I already had a lot of experience on my belt at that point and to see how far I've come thanks to these people and thanks to people like my mom really means a lot and to see her want to support my Patreon campaign is a really really touching thing. It just goes to show she has so much confidence in it and I've been showing her my YouTube channel and she's just so amazed by it and she's so proud of me for it and I'm proud of myself because of it because I, I've been able to come so far. If you're, if anyone here is not familiar with Patreon, it's actually a crowdfunding campaign for smaller creatives, not big company or not like like big projects like you would find on Kickstarter. But for my personal campaign, you can donate monthly. It's kind of like a subscription, let's say. So you can donate a particular amount monthly to me and I have particular like goodies I offer uh, depending on how much you pledge and I have milestones when I meet certain milestones then I could offer potentially more or I can offer some kind of a way of giving back to the community and two of those ways that I've already reached are one to make a monthly donation to several charities um, that mean a lot to me personally so and to help out other 
Patreon creatives as well. So I'm in the process of working on those right now and I will talk about the charity that I'm donating to this month. Uh, although I think I'm going to start that next month just because of money issues right now. But I'm going to continue giving shout outs to the people who I do donate to as well like I did for GoGo -Go and for Pushing Up Roses. So please stay tuned for that. If you want to check out my campaign, see for yourself why I want to start it, what I plan on doing with my YouTube channel because it's all about my YouTube channel and what I've done with it so far and what I plan to do more so in the future, you can find out below. I, uh, I've left a link for you all if you're interested in helping me out. So yeah, um, I think that's it in terms of YouTube stuff. I'm just trying to get as much done as I can. I've been planning out my videos like well ahead. I'm usually planning out videos a week ahead of time. So I have a lot of videos coming up that I'm really excited for you all to see. Uh, and yeah, I mean, everything's been really awesome so far and I, I couldn't be happier. I honestly, I couldn't be happier. So thank you so much once again, everybody. I really, really, really appreciate it. In terms of other stuff, I have made some guest appearances on a few podcasts. Um, one of the ones I forgot to actually mention last week's uh, last week in my weekly vlog was for Ladies of the Round Table. I had a really, a really amazing experience with all the ladies who are part of that wonderful podcast and really made me feel extremely comfortable and just uh, put me in a very positive state of mind while I was on it. Um, that's a podcast that I definitely recommend all of you check out, especially um, if you're looking for a, uh, a female perspective. I'm pretty gender neutral when it comes to everything. Uh, for me, a gamer is a gamer. There's no such thing as like a gamer girl or a gamer guy. It's just being a gamer, right? Um, and at the same time, though, I, I understand that um, seeing something from my gender is not something that I see often enough and to see that perspective is really refreshing and that's why I really like uh, Ladies at the Round Table. So I definitely recommend checking out their podcast. Another that I was part of um, this week was actually uh, Excess Gaming Podcast. The guys in there were really awesome. We were talking mostly about JRPGs or RPGs in general and got to reminisce and we got to talk a lot about, uh, you know, the latest news and everything as well. And it was really, really awesome. It was great and it was nice having the time to just sit one-on-one -on -one and really delve into into particular topics in video game culture right now. So if you haven't checked out Excess Gaming, I definitely recommend that as well. Another thing I wanted to say um, and give a big shout out to was to Kawaii Bass. I was talking about this last week. It's a really fun dance party that happens every few months. Mostly focuses on J-pop um, and it's just it's a really really fun fun dance party that happens here in Toronto that if you do live in Toronto or around Toronto and you're interested in going to a very safe environment with a lot of just fun energetic people who are into gaming or anime, this is the place, it's the place. Everyone's very welcoming and really great. And if you hang out in back, you can play like Toho shmups, so, or bullet hells, and that's amazing. So I kind of got zoned into that for a while because I do really love, I love my shmups. I love my bullet hells. I love all of that, which I'm probably going to have to delve into in an episode in the future because I feel like everything's JRPGs. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. But I had to give a shout out to Kawaii Base. Definitely check it out as well as to Ladies of the Round Table and Excess Gaming. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this week's weekly vlog. <laughs> I, uh, if, if there's anything really cool that's happened to you this week or anything you just want to talk about, or if you want to talk about Nagiyasu or anything else I mentioned in my video, please feel free to leave a comment below. And, uh, you know, also make sure to check out the details and check out all the links of all the different things that I, I mentioned on this episode. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed and I hope you have an awesome day. All right, peace.